thank you for uh, joining us here for this press conference where uh, this gathering of folks, a coalition of interests, are opposing SB 54 by Senator Lan Lonnie Hancock, who represents a district that includes both the Chevron refinery in Richmond as well as the ConocoPhillips refinery in Rodeo. And um, my name is Andres Soto and I'm the Richmond organizer for Communities for a Better Environment. And I'm also a steering committee member for the uh, Richmond Progressive Alliance. And we are a local uh, political organization in Richmond that has been fighting to bring accountability to Chevron. And uh, so Richmond Progressive Alliance is opposed to SB 54 specifically because we've been working to make the refinery safer and we've been trying to do it through our local industrial safety ordinance as well as through the help of the investigative agencies who investigated the toxic explosion of August 6, uh, 2012 at the Richmond Chevron refinery. And so we're calling upon Lonnie Hancock to drop this bill. Earlier this year we fought to kill AB 26, a bill that would have done the exact same thing as well as allowed the refineries to tap into the greenhouse gas emissions fund where they've already paid in because of their excessive pollution and this would have allowed them to take money back out to support uh, basic fundamental uh, uh, what do you call it uh, maintenance work at the refinery and we felt that was an injustice and it was unfair and so now we're very dismayed that Lonnie Hancock Senator Lonnie Hancock who we've stood with on many issues uh, is now engaging in really a special interest bill that will prefer the building trades unions uh, and uh, allow them to take jobs away from the current operators who are represented by the United Steel Workers. This would phase them out and phase in the building trades. We have real problems with that because the building trades have been opposed to everything progressive in the city of Richmond. They've been opposed to, uh, they sided with Chevron to try to get a dirty project through back in 2008. That got thrown out in court. They uh, opposed the community when we stopped the Indian casino coming in at Point Malati. And now we see that you know they're trying to take the steel workers' jobs. Well, the Richmond Progressive Alliance, as part of the Richmond Environmental Justice uh, Coalition, stands with the steel workers, and uh, we are opposed to... Um, SB 54. We think it's a bad bill. It's a problem. Uh, it's a solution looking for a problem. The safety issue is not the the workers in the refinery. It's the managers who run the refinery into the ground. So next, I'd like to uh, bring up Stephanie Hervey, who is uh, representing Communities for a Better Environment. Stephanie Hervey is from Richmond, California. Good morning. Well, we do know that someone listened when we asked that the funds not be given to uh, for routine maintenance. However, 54 doesn't address all the issues that we have today. I'm Stephanie. I'm with Community for a Better Environment. And we wrote a letter to Senator Hancock. Dear Senator Hancock, in October 1991, delegates to the first National People of Color Environmental Leadership Summit drafted a 17 principles of environmental justice. These principles have since served as the defining document for the growing grassroots movement for environmental justice. The eighth principle is affirming the right of all workers to a safe and healthy work environment without being forced to choose between unsafe livelihood and our unemployment. SB 54 will completely trample this principle. SB 54 will hurt, will hurt both workers and community by making refineries even less safe. Community for better environment must therefore take the position of oppose. SB 54 includes provisions that have unacceptable impacts on our members and the public. Specifically, the bill would amend to say, hurt workers' rights by choosing temporary contract workers over highly trained, permanent workers who would lose refinery jobs. The irony that pervades this proposed bill is staggering. 
both Senator Hancock and Assemblymember Skinner previously introduced SB 691 calling for stricter penalties in order to improve safety at refineries. SB 54 even directly correlates the training of workers with the safety of refineries. However, in stark contrast, SB 54 then effectively replaces already trained, highly skilled workers as such as the United Steel workers with those who have little or no experience as operators in high hazard facilities. Although the latter would receive some classroom and laboratory instruction, the simple facts remain that nothing can replace the on the ground experience, 20, 30 years worth of experience that the United Steel workers possess in currently operating high hazard facilities on a daily basis. Furthermore, by splitting the contract workforce among several unions instead of one, the workers' voice for effective health and safety for themselves and the surrounding communities is weakened. Communities for a Better Environment works in close collaboration with the United Steel Workers Local 5, 326, 675, among others, and shares their concerns about the motivation behind the outcome of this bill. It is clear that Chevron and its allies are trying to blame the workers for such events as August 6, 2012, the Chevron Richmond refinery, uh, refinery toxic explosion and fire, despite scientific evidence to the contrary. In fact, the evidence is that the workers repeatedly warn management of the problems that cause some 15,000 of our residents to visit the hospital. The U.S. Chemical Safety Board and its interim investigation report has clearly identified that it was Chevron management decisions that caused the explosion and fire, not worker error or lack of training. In fact, the cover of the report identifies the key issues as inherently safer design, damage mechanism hazard review, and effective analysis of process safeguards and process hazard analysis. So under the proposed language of SB 54, refineries will become less safe. SB 54 will infringe upon the rights of all refinery workers in California by forcing those refinery workers to choose between an unsafe livelihood and unemployment. Please oppose SB 54. Thank you. Good. Next, you're going to hear from Sylvia Gray White, who's also a member of uh, CBE and a resident of Richmond and a survivor of the 2012 toxic fire and explosion at the Chevron Richmond Refinery. Sylvia Gray White. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Sylvia Gray White. And I just want to let you know, this is what I have to wear in Richmond to keep from getting sick and going back to the ER. I'm a member of CBE and I'm very disappointed at how our government leaders continue to fail to provide a safe and clean environment for our communities. It is well known that the heavy metals being released into our air are toxic to our bodies and cause many health problems which can result in long-term illnesses and death. Yet, we do not have a medical society that addresses the cause of our problems. The California Code of Regulations requires that owners and operators of hazardous waste facilities make arrangements to familiarize local hospitals with the properties of hazardous waste handled at their facility and the types of injuries or illnesses which could result from fires, explosions, or releases at that facility. Chevron has failed to do that. When over 15,000 people went to the hospital August 6, 2012, they were not treated properly. I know, because I was one of them. I got sick three days after the fire. The air was still full of pollution. Three days the air was reported by the Bay Area Air Quality Management District which only monitors the air one day per week, they reported as a spare the air days. Do you think that is adequate? I certainly do not. I breathe 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Their monitoring should be on the same schedule. I offered to drive a friend to the ER because he had developed a rash from the chemical exposure. On the way to the ER, 
I began to feel as if something very heavy were on top of my head. I began to feel dizzy. My throat felt sore. I began to feel very depressed and very afraid and started to cry. I sought treatment myself. They took my blood pressure, checked my heart rate, told me to take an aspirin and a cough drop. They had no idea what was in my body. Neither did I. We are not addressing what really needs to be addressed now, right now. People are sick and dying from what has already happened. Everyone in Richmond should have a test to determine what toxic chemicals are in their body. Then they should be put on a program to detox them, the chemicals from their body. If you don't treat the cause of the illness, you will not recover. We need a medical community that is trained to provide appropriate care to heal us from the environmental issues we face on a daily basis. The Chevron fire was put out over a year ago. But who's going to put out the fire in our bodies? We test the air, the soil, the water, but who is testing us? I had asked Kaiser Hospital several years ago for a test of toxins. For test for toxins. They had a board meeting and told me there was nothing to justify a test for chemical toxins. The fact that my zip, my zip code is in Richmond, California is justification enough. I recently took a hair analysis test, which is reportedly a good method to determine toxicity. The results, I have lead, arsenic, mercury in my system right now. And that is even though I have been detoxing for several years. None of these chemicals are good for your body. Lead displaces the calcium in your bones, causes arthritis, joint pain, we're seeing more younger people now with arthritis and canes. There are so many illnesses and conditions caused by these daily fugitive emissions. Most people have heard about cancer and asthma being caused. My daughter has Hodgkin's lymphoma, which the multiple safety data sheet says is caused by benzene, which is a daily emission from Chevron. Obesity, diabetes, heart palpitations, Hypocardia, heart attacks, lupus, multiple sclerosis, COPD, neurological damage, erectile dysfunction, low sperm count, gallstones, kidney stones, the list goes on and on. We need help now. We need healing now. We don't need to spend time, money, and energy pitting one union against each, uh, each uh, once another to continue what is going on at an even less safety level proposed by SB 54 by not requiring much needed sufficient experience levels. We don't need to continue to take oil out of our earth and continue to destroy the earth and its people. This is premeditated murder. Genocide. Everyone knows these chemicals can cause death but we are told there are safe limits. There are no safe limits for poison. Stop trying to make an industry safe that will never be safe. The manufacturing, the oil manufacturing process is not safe. The product that they manufacture is not safe. Benzene is a part of both of them. We can run cars on something else that will kill people and the planet. It's time to do that because we're running out of time. So the United Steelworkers represents the uh, men and women who operate the refineries on a daily basis, and they are the ones who are the front line, uh, have the front line responsibility for safety in the refineries. And if you saw the video uh, that was made by the Chemical Safety Board on the causes of the Chevron toxic fire and explosion, you will see that it was United Steelworkers members who were almost killed. Twenty of them were almost incinerated in an instant at that uh, refinery accident. So next we're going to hear from the United Steel Workers and we're going to start off with uh, Jerry Elizondo. Good morning, my name is Jerry Elizondo. And, um, spell that for me, Jerry. Spell your last name. Please. It's uh, E-L-I-Z-O-N-D-O. And I've been a United Steel Workers for the past six years. I've been working at the same refinery the whole entire time. Uh, I strongly oppose SB 54 due to the fact that it has great potential in displacing current workers that are working at these refineries. Um, it's going to affect their livelihoods. Not only is it a uh, issue of um, 
losing jobs and livelihoods, it's also an issue with safety. Uh, replacing us with people with less experience in these uh, refineries in these positions that we currently have, it could cause a great safety issue. So uh, I'd like for you guys to help us and uh, oppose SB 54. And um, I'm going to go ahead and introduce uh, Eduardo Perez. <laughs> Hi, my name is Eduardo Perez. I work in Los Angeles, California for uh, Tesoro and I've been doing this for probably about eight years. And in eight years I've, cho I've taken the responsibility of working in refineries so my family doesn't have to. So they can live a better life, a good life. And SB 54 seriously takes away from that. We turn around, I wake up every single day knowing that I got somewhere to go. And in January, that can all be taken away. I can go and do something else, but I enjoy what I do. I'm willing to put my life on the line for my family because I enjoy my job. I enjoy working with the people that I work with. And as of today, you know, I've met other people, more people, better people, and of course, braver people than myself. And I'm proud of that. So please, fight SB 54. We can't let this pass. Thank you very much. I'd like to pass it on to Jason Khan. Uh, yes, my name is Jason Kahn. Uh, this is my daughter. Uh, the reason why we're against SB 54 is because it's going to take jobs from guys like me and guys like, you know, the, the ones that work in the refining all the way around. It's not just us that's speaking here today. We're speaking for the group. And, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure they'll agree at 60% of all the jobs that are going to be taken. That could be me, that could be any of us. And I fed my kids on the refinery. I, I really did, I made good money. I'm still making good money. And of course, you know, I don't wanna lose that. I don't wanna be on unemployment, you know. I'm well trained, well skilled at what I do. And we have a great safety record where I work at. And uh, you know, we're just against it, SB 54. Uh, we're not against the other unions or anything like that. We're just standing up for what's right with us. This is how we feel about the situation. And, you know, I have kids and I want to continue to be able to support my kids and take care of my kids. And by doing that, I would have to have a job, of course. You know? So, uh, that's all I got. Spell your name for me. Uh, Jason, J-S-O-N. Last name is Khan. C-O-N-N. Hello everybody, my name is Martin Reyes and I'm from Summer, California. Like my union brother's been saying, this bill here will affect all of us. Uh, on our refinery, we have an excellent safety record, more than a decade without accidents or recordables. And like uh, they were saying also, I mean, there's a nice place to work, the environment's nice, and uh, this will affect us. I don't want to like to go to unemployment it's a hassle going through all this deal so please vote no say no for this bill please thank you i'll pass you bill montica my name is bill montica and i work in santa maria i've been working in the refinery business since uh, 1990 prior to that i worked in uh, power plants uh, like like martini said uh, at our refinery, we have an excellent uh, 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 safety record. Um, we basically do the refinery work up and down the coast. Um, the reason we've been safe and, and uh, continue to be safe is because of the USW workers. Um, and this is our this is our life, pretty much. So uh, again, we're we're against AB 54. Thank you.
So today we've heard from several of the workers. We've heard from community members and residents and allies within the environmental community. We are truly for a bill that actually makes the workplace safer. We would love to see safety components built into this bill, but there are none. There are no safety records inclusions, there are no skills testing, none of that is required within this bill. This bill actually takes, it's a blame the worker piece of legislation. That's what it does. It says that the incidents that have taken place within refineries are because of workers. Yet, if you review the Chemical Safety Board investigation that was done on the refinery incident that took place at Chevron, you will find that workers were not at fault. In fact, our workers are the reason that they got out alive. Our workers are the reason that 15,000 community members went to hospitals rather than having people who were dead. We went in and mitigated the situation to the extent that we could and were able to get everyone out safely. That is the difference. Our workers are fully trained in oil refinery work. This is what they do with their careers. This is all they have done with their careers. This bill actually seeks to place the workers who have had their entire careers within this industry taken away and replaced with workers who have never worked a day in a refinery in their life. And not even consistent workers, it will be a series of transient workers that will come in to do the work. That is a recipe for disaster. The very purported training program for safety that they would need to go through, in fact, would not even be in place until four years after these folks were in their jobs. If I live in that fence line community, I am terrified. You are putting my life on the line every day. I am the person who is at risk. This is completely unacceptable. So without safety records, without a steady workforce, without the training and experience that our workers have, how does this ensure community safety and health, and how does this raise the bar for any workers at all? There are two other bills that Senator Hancock has authored, SB 438 that deals with turnaround work in refineries, and SB 691 which puts penalties for air violations. We stand in full support of those measures. What we don't stand in support of is something that puts our workers and communities at risk. Additionally, when you have a safety record that speaks for itself, we are in the same classification as clerical workers and ice cream manufacturers. Don't know about you, but it pretty much isn't rocket science here that we are the safest in the industry. We stand solidly behind that safety record. So to displace us and put in unskilled, untrained workers, which this bill is supposed to be about, it absolutely doesn't accomplish that task. And this is supposed to be a job creator, but it doesn't. If it displaces 5,000 people, who now go into the unemployment lines who cannot provide for their families, what does this really do? True job creation comes through organizing and training unorganized workers. That is what the bill should be about. This bill doesn't accomplish that. And in fact, this bill goes so far as to say that the training programs that we must go through, we actually are precluded from participating in. So we have no access, equal access, to the educational opportunity to be able to get into to keep our own jobs. How is this fair? So this bill is fraught with many elements in it that make it extremely unsafe all the way around. As we approach Labor Day here, we, the people who fought for 40-hour work weeks, the people who fought for eight-hour days, the reason that you have your lunch breaks and your meal breaks and get all of the privileges you do today, it would be spitting in the face of those who came before us and fought so hard for these protections to let this bill pass as it is currently written. We seek amendments that actually will put safety elements into the bill and allow us to have our workers, our workers that have worked in these refineries their entire careers, who have site-specific and industry training, this is all they have ever done, we want to make sure they aren't put out onto the street. That is what we are here to fight for today and to continue to keep our communities safe. And if we don't speak out, who will? We, continue, we will continue to be the whistleblowers when we see industry do things wrong. 
do things wrong. Will that be the case if you have a person who works in a refinery one day and in a schoolyard the next and on a high rise the next that is unskilled in oil refinery safety? I don't think so. Please, please, please join us in saying no to SB 54 until it's written right. Thank you for coming today. <laughs> Catherine Houston, C-A-T-H-E-R-I-N-E, H-O-U-S-T-O-N. -E -E, and I am a proud United Steelworker. Thank you.